We have negative one amp outside, guys. This is in the battery 3.0, so don't worry about it. As always, I'm running a test on it, and I have to apologize if it is a bit loud in here, but I have the fan and the air condition running. We had a 40, 41 degrees today, and like 180 amps. Guys, I want to say a big thank you to you for leaving all these hundreds of comments under one of my last videos where we discussed the connection between the Seplos BMS and the Victron system. And many of you have made some very good suggestions and recommendations. So, so there are some really great ideas in these comments. And I want to follow up of some of them and actually test this out. One of the first recommendations I want to test today is turning DVCC off. Because the person said, well, if you don't have a supported battery in your system, you should not have DVCC turned on at all. And here, looking at the DVCC manual online, we can actually see at the DVCC requirements, battery compatibility, it says for CAN bus connected batteries, this is what we have. Check the relevant page on the battery compatibility manual to see if enabling DVCC has been tested with your battery and if it is supported. If DVCC is not mentioned in notes relating to your battery, do not turn on DVCC. So, as you can see, I have now turned off DVCC and immediately our solar charge controller jumps from external control into bulk absorption and float eventually. So it now follows again the internal charging algorithm. And this is probably good, right? This is probably what we exactly what we want. Because one of the complaints was about the Seplos BMS. It doesn't request any float mode. So it always keeps the battery on your set absorption or bulk voltage and never reduces this voltage at, at some stage. Never. And because as soon as we turn on DVCC, the solar charge controller goes into external control and all its charging algorithm is being overwritten. So the charge controller does not use any internal settings anymore. But now we have turned it off again and bang, bulk. 68, okay. Um, I told you we had 40, over 40 degrees today. And then of course, when I do battery testing, uh, and it's cloudy, all right? 70 watts. <laughs> so anyway, in this time we can check the parameters of the solar charge controllers. 55.2 volts. My absorption voltage uh, 53.6 is the float. And we can see we are staying in absorption for one hour. It still says it is BMS controlled, see that? And I cannot turn this off as soon as I go reset. BMS control will be enabled automatically when a BMS is detected. So I cannot really turn it off. And of course I've got both BMSs still in parallel connected via the CAN cable to the Serbo GX. And here in my system setup of the Victron system, you can see our battery monitor is still the CAN Smart BMS. Well, and um, potentially you can already see the difference in voltage of the BMS, what it's reporting to the Victron system, 53.97 and the MPPT measures 54.05. I mean, you will see when the sun is coming back and we're charging with a higher current, this difference between what the BMS measures inside the battery and what the solar charge controller measures on the outside, there is quite a huge difference actually in voltage. And I have tested this this afternoon when the sun was still out and could see the solar charge controller goes actually into absorption voltage while the battery is not at absorption voltage yet. So uh, let's wait for the sun to come back. So the sun is back. We are measuring 54.2 volts and we're measuring 54.08 here. There, there you can see both voltages now. This 54.3 to 54.14 what the BMS measures. And this is clearly due to the voltage drop now we have with the current charging the battery, right? But here I don't know why the Victron system doesn't synchronize the voltages coming from the battery monitor. And as you have seen in the, in the setup of the Victron system, we have clearly said the BMS, the Seplos BMS is our battery monitor. So I don't know why it doesn't use this voltage from the battery monitor now to, um, to feed this into the solar charge controller. 
because um, this is exactly what the big system here does as well. It feeds the information from the smart shunt in here to the solar charge controller, so they all have the same voltage. But here we have also set the smart Bluetooth network and all solar charge controllers and the smart shunt are a member of this network, so they are sharing voltage, temperatures and current and everything. And this is not the case with the battery 3.0, as you can just see. I mean, look at this voltage difference. That is insane. That is like almost 150 millivolt difference now. Yeah. Uh, so far it doesn't look like a big problem, but just wait until we hit the 55.2 volts absorption voltage and then the problem starts. So we have just hit uh, 55 volts and still charging with 6.3 amps into the battery and you can see we are at 54.87 here what the BMS reports. I have turned off all the load now so there's nothing connected anymore. We are at 55.1. As soon as we hit the 55.2 we will see absorption. Come on, come on! There, 55.2. There, absorption. Did you see that? Bang. So, this is now constant voltage charging. And here we have just passed the 55.05 volts. Okay, let's give this a minute and I'll be right back. So, we are still absorbing 55.17 volts from the solar charge controllers. 8 watts. There's still some current going into the batteries but the battery monitor, the BMSs don't show anything anymore, 0.0, .0 amps. You can see the highest voltage cell is 3.449 volts, so just under the balance voltage. Yeah, and this leads us to the next problem. So you can see the batteries actually don't reach the 55.2 volts. Uh, we will never reach any balance voltage here at absorption stage. I mean, if one of the cells is now higher than 3.45, of course it will kick in. But usually at 55.2, we should see some of the cells balancing. But here is nothing. Yeah, so by turning off the DVCC, we are losing actually the external control of the MPPT to the BMS. And unfortunately also the voltage sharing. So the MPPT can only measure at its terminals and if your charge controller is a bit away from your battery you will have a certain voltage drop depending on the current and it shows you a wrong voltage. So you may end up with your battery not reaching the 55.2 volts or whatever you have set in your system. And here measuring around 55.2 volts but with a multimeter but with a multimeter around 54.9 this is 0.3 volts difference guys. And this cannot be a voltage drop on the cables because, well, we are not charging anymore. It's 0.1 amps and all the load is turned off. It's pre pretty much a dead system at the moment. Okay, so the solar charge controller is now turning off completely, 0.0, .0 amps. But we are still at 55.11 volts here, so it doesn't go any higher. Okay, let's quickly confirm what happens if we turn on DVCC again. So immediately it shows external control again and the maximum charge voltage is 55.2 but we know from previous testing we need to go 0.1 volt higher because otherwise it charges only to 55.1 volts. So if we do that we should actually see the charge controller kicking in again. There it comes. And it's now recharging to 55.2 volts. So here again, we have to set the desired voltage of our system in the DVCC by 0.1 volt higher than the BMS actually shows. Can we just do the same without the DVCC and set our absorption voltage like 55.2 to 55.5, 0.3 volt higher? I'm not a big fan of doing these offsets in either direction because then you compensate for something which may not be there anymore if there's less current flowing. And as we have just seen, this is not even the voltage drop here. It just is a different voltage reading because nothing is synchronized. 
So, but now we are down to 0.6 amps. Yeah, here the battery monitor shows 55.19. And we've got, do we have a cell balancing? Probably not because we are under 20 millivolt balance difference setting. So, and now after a few minutes, the solar charge controller has turned off charging altogether. There's nothing going into the batteries anymore. And I believe the battery will now go slowly down to 55.2 and then the solar charge controller kicks in again. We can actually turn on the inverter again and put some load here on the system and see if it stabilizes at 55.2 volts now. Ah, nice. The fan comes on again. Ah. So we are now discharging the battery with the inverter and the fan running, but we cannot see any charging from the solar charge controllers and it should have kicked in at 55.2 volts already but the BMS says no, nah, don't need it I'll take my battery to charge to um, supply load now it's coming in now it's coming in okay just under 55.2 volts okay all good I thought we are seeing a microcycling again but no it's not the case that is fine but guys, again, we have now DVCC turned on, right? Which we shouldn't do as per the manual, as per the instructions from Victron and as per the recommendations of one of my viewers. So, but with these settings, everything works fine, kind of. We know the battery will never go to float. It will stay on these 55.2 volts now, but at least the voltage reading is now accurate and the BMS is actually controlling the solar charge controller. So yeah, turning it off. We could see there there it just jumped to bulk from external control to bulk and now it's using the internal algorithm again there it's going to absorption straight away yeah but then we've got the uh, voltage um, difference again between the battery the bms and the solar charge controller so you cannot win right so what do you think about this solution turning off the DVCC and using the internal charge algorithm again of the solar charge controller and using the BMSs of the Sepler system only as a battery monitor? So in this case, the BMS would not control the system as much anymore. It would still report all the information to the Victron system. Details. You can still see our two packs here with a minimum and maximum voltage, a minimum maximum temperature two battery modules online and all this kind of stuff. It still reports all this information to the Victron system and we can still see, let me show you. See, for example, here in the Victron VRM for the SPAT calibration center, uh, it, it still reports the BMS min-max cell voltage of the Sepler system to the Victron system and it builds this graph of the maximum and the minimum voltage of our battery cells. So we can still monitoring the BMSs remotely. So if there's an over temperature alarm, it still comes through here in the VRM and then we can remotely turn on a fan or an air conditioner or something. So again, turning off the DVCC will not do any control of the BMS of your Victron system anymore. All the solar charge controllers are valid again and the BMS is only reporting whatever is happening in the battery to the Victron system, but the Victron system does not react to it anymore. So what do you think about this solution? Could this work? I'm, I'm happy to run this for a week or so and see how it goes and then report back to you how it actually went. I mean, again, this is only one solution you have recommended. And in the next video, I'll show you another idea from one of my viewers here on how to set up the Seplos BMSs correctly with the Victron system. Totally different approach and idea. But I want to show you all these recommendations here on the channel so you can pick what is best working with your system then. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Thanks for all your generous donations. Welcome to the SPAT team. And also thank you again for all your comments. As you can see, they are really good ideas, recommendations. So it's definitely worth leaving your comment under these videos. Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs> There's a good old absorption again. <laughs>